On the 4th of October 1957, the Soviet Union launched a small metal sphere into orbit around the Earth, Sputnik. Sputnik 1 was the first artificial satellite, transmitting its iconic beeps to radio sets around the globe, striking fear into the West and prompting celebration in the East. But in talking about the little satellite's effects on the Cold War, the space race and history in general, we often forget about the craft itself. So what was Sputnik? What was it for? How did it work? And what happened to it? Today we focus on the design, development and purpose of the Sputnik 1 satellite. We sometimes consider the launch of Sputnik 1 in October 1957 as the beginning of the space race. But, of course, it was merely the first achievement, the first milestone. The race had already begun. In 1955, both the US and the Soviets announced that they would launch an artificial satellite in the International Geophysical Year, between July 1957 and December 1958. The Soviet design was known as Object D. This satellite would weigh in at about 1,200 kilograms, around 250 kilograms of which would be scientific instruments for measuring the density of the atmosphere, ion compositions, solar winds, magnetic fields, and cosmic rays. This data was going to be beamed back to a series of ground stations, collecting the vital information within. Of course, we know that Object D is not the little metal beach ball we know and love. No, the project was far too ambitious. The risk of being beaten by the Americans was too high. A significantly simpler spacecraft would be constructed. Object PS, Prostasi Sputnik, Simple Satellite. This was a far less complex design, weighing in at only around 100 kilograms. The Object PS launch vehicle was an adaption of the R-7 Semyorka Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, the most powerful rocket in the world at that time. Originally adapted for the much larger Object D, the peace-loving, space exploration versions of the R-7 had upgraded main engines, a new, shorter fairing for the satellites, and all unnecessary equipment had been removed, including the 5 megaton thermonuclear warhead, save those for some western city. After a series of tests, some of which proved explosive, the RS series was approved for satellite launches, and on September 22, 1957, an R-7 with index 8K-71PS arrived at the Cosmodrome and the engineers busied themselves getting this rocket, named Sputnik, ready for launch. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to coordinate this sort of thing? Thousands of people working all across the Soviet Union towards one goal, writing letters and telegrams. Lucky for me, in creating this video, I had use of today's sponsor, Odoo. Odoo is an all-in-one management software, providing entrepreneurs with an entire suite of applications to simplify their day-to-day. -day. Invoicing, accounting, inventory, website creation, sales, Odoo does it all. But for this video, I need project management help, so I use the project application. Creating a video sometimes has a lot of moving parts, and for this one, I needed to work with both 3D and 2D animators. I created a project to have a clear overview of the video and seeing how each task was progressing was incredibly helpful. I could assign each task to each person super easily. Within each task, I could send emails, log notes, schedule calls, meetings, etc. Centralizing the information through the chatter makes it easier for everyone to see what's going on, allowing us to all work together in real time and actively increasing the quality of work we're doing together. Tasks can be displayed in Kanban view, Gantt view, or list view, so you can use whatever layout suits your needs. But the best part, it's free. When you sign up for Odoo, your first app is free for life, including unlimited hosting and support. If your business grows, then so does Odoo, allowing you to add additional apps as you go. Odoo is genuinely an absolute pleasure to use. I'd encourage you to try it out. Remember, your first app is completely free. Link is in the description below. The final design was a spherical ball with a diameter of 58 centimeters, weighing in at just under 84 kilograms. For a spacecraft, this was teeny tiny. It was constructed of two aluminium hemispheres, two millimeters thick, and connected to each other using 36 bolts, with O-rings at the interface sealing the interior of the sphere from the vacuum of space. 
However, what you're actually looking at is the external heat shield, a one millimeter thick hemisphere on top of the frontal structural hemisphere. I've never said hemisphere so much in my life. Anyway, this heat shield was made of AMG6T, a cutting edge aluminium, magnesium, titanium alloy. Both hemispheres were polished to a mirror finish in order to make the tiny craft a lot easier to spot from the ground far below. But before we even look at the internals, even the shape of Sputnik 1 was going to advance science. By sending up a nearly perfect sphere and studying the rate that the atmosphere slowed Sputnik and altered its orbit, Soviet scientists could calculate atmospheric density. This would be a lot more difficult with a more complex shape. They were doing aerodynamic calculations by hand after all. So we've got a highly polished metal sphere. What was inside? Why was it beeping away like a washing machine you've forgotten to empty? Sputnik was essentially a very expensive radio beacon. From the outside we can see the two antennas, each with two beams. These antenna were attached to a radio transmitter, a rectangular box that protruded from the inside of the frontal hemisphere. Slotted onto this was an octagonal structure, the power supply. This was an arrangement of three large silver zinc batteries, with a hole in the middle to allow the radio transmitter to pass through. Two of the batteries powered the transmitter itself, while the third powered a ventilator fan. A fan for whom, you may ask? See, the inside of Sputnik was pressurised, hermetically sealed within the two outer shells, and pumped full of dry nitrogen to a pressure of 1.3 atmospheres. This allowed the heat from the batteries and radio transmitters to be managed. Thermal switches monitored the temperature inside. If it rose above 30 degrees Celsius, the fan would switch on, circulating the air against the cooler outer shell and turning off again once the temperature fell below 23 degrees. The radio signal itself wasn't just for tracking. It was set to continuously broadcast, alternating between 20 MHz and 40 MHz, spinning 0.2 seconds at each and producing this iconic beep pattern. However, this was the all OK beep. There were actually five other beep patterns, each signifying a different problem had occurred inside the tiny spacecraft. This system worked using a signal manipulator circuit that was connected to the transmitter. Electronics are black magic to me, but it essentially contained three error switches attached to various temperature and pressure sensors. Switch one was usually closed, but opened when the temperature in the craft dropped below zero degrees Celsius. Switch 2 was the same, but instead opened when the temperature went above 50 degrees. Switch 3 was usually open, but closed when the pressure inside the craft dropped below 250 millimeters of mercury, which is about 0.33 atmosphere. The state of these three error switches, functioning as part of the manipulator circuit, allowed five different transmissions to be produced. So, depending on the transmission coming from the satellite, engineers could discern if Sputnik was too cold, too hot, had sprung a leak, or a combination of two. But let's see what happened. PS-1 was launched late at night on October the 4th, 1957. The booster successfully separated 116.38 seconds later, with the second stage burning out at 314.5 seconds. Around 20 seconds after that, a spring ejected the conical fairing from the front of the launch vehicle, and Sputnik was gently pushed into space by an oxygen-actuated piston. And then the beeping began. The Soviet Union had just successfully launched the first artificial satellite into orbit. Sputnik was on an oblong orbit, with a low point of 228 kilometers and a high point of 947, with an orbital inclination of 65 degrees. It would complete the revolution of the Earth every 96 minutes, and people all around the globe could listen in deftly tuning their radio sets to hear the beep 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 of the Soviet spacecraft soaring above them. For Western governments, this was an incredibly ominous, insidious sound. It signified that they were far behind. But that's for a different video. Sputnik kept beeping for 326 orbits of the Earth, with the batteries running out on 26th of October 1957. The frequency of the transmission never changed, signifying the temperature inside remained consistent, and that the sphere itself was never breached. Sputnik 1 continued its silent revolutions, eventually falling out of orbits and burning up on the 4th of January 1958, after going around the world some 1,440 times. It's difficult to overstate the impact of Sputnik 1, both in technology and in geopolitics. Sputnik 2 would follow on the 3rd of November 1957, 
shortly after Sputnik 1 stopped transmitting, but before it had left orbit. Sputnik 2 carried the first animal into orbit, the space dog Laika. In May 1958, Sputnik 3 was launched into orbit. This was the Object D design that was put to the side in order to beat the United States, who launched their first satellite, Explorer 1, in February 1958. But I'm digressing. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it. If you want similar videos, but about tanks, planes and helicopters, I'd encourage you to check out the rest of the channel. If you want exclusive videos, early access and ad-free content, head over to the Patreon. You can see my Patreon exclusive video on the HS-293, Nazi Germany's anti-shipping missile. Thank you so much to my existing Patreon supporters, I couldn't do it without you. Remember to like and subscribe, and tell all your friends how amazing I am.